Hi again, I'm Amit, the PCB guy, and today we're gonna discuss design. So let's face it, without a good design, things can get, well, a little crazy. Ah! Oh! I need those designs. If we don't get these boards built, we're dead. So when designing a board that might have characteristics just outside of normal parameters, it's important to talk to your PCB manufacturer from the outset. This will give you an idea of what's manufacturable and what's not. PCB manufacturing capabilities are just guidelines. So different minimum specifications depend on different circumstances and other board characteristics. So for example, the smallest mechanical drill size is six mils, but what really matters is how it relates to the board's total thickness. So a six mil drill on a 250 mil board is much more challenging than a six mil drill on a 62 mil board. So the different minimum design rules play off one another. So the variations and combinations are virtually limitless. So typically, the PCB design process looks like this. The designer and the engineering team, they take great care in designing their product to make sure it works within their spec. But then something funny happens. They throw it over the proverbial wall to the PCB fabrication shop. And if there's one thing wrong, my friend, one thing designed outside of the capabilities of the fabrication shop, guess what? The fab shop throws it back over to the design. And back and forth madness starts. This can only add days to your tight schedule. Each PCB manufacturer has different ways of manufacturing and different design rules and different guidelines based on their specific industry experience. So that one same design, if you send it to one manufacturer, might not question anything. Send the same design to the next manufacturer and they might very well question something. So what is the best time to begin communication? Well, this of course depends on the complexity of your design. So remember, each design is unique. But most of the time, after component placement is done, the requirements have been gathered from the electrical team as well, and you know where all your critical trace routes are. So at this time, the designer and the manufacturer can have a meaningful discussion around the PCB stack up, the pad sizes needed to be used, the VS sizes required, and any other critical elements to the design. And don't forget the rough budgetary quote that can be drafted to ensure the designer has not inadvertently designed anything extra into the board that would cost more. Always remember, designing prototypes and designing a few pieces is not the same as designing for mass production. Irregularities in production, not apparent in low volume quantities, could become issues in mass production, impacting both yield and cost. So check out our Design for PCB Assembly review to learn more about what we look for and what you should too. Don't let designing your boards drive you crazy. Connect with your PCB manufacturer and get it right the first time.